Hey there, um, today you guys are actually going to be working on topic G.1, completing G.1.1 to G.1.2 and G.1.6, but I wanted to give you a little bit of an introduction to what you're going to be accomplishing the Monday following spring break, so April 7th. Um, this is referring to the Mark Release Recapture Lab that we discussed earlier. So just a quick reminder, remember that Mark Release Recapture, or the Lincoln Index, is a method for estimating the population size, especially of mobile animals. It's really difficult to actually count the population of any organism, um, but especially mobile animals. And so we use this equation to estimate population size. Remember that N1 is the number of organisms marked in the first capture, N2 is the number of organisms um, captured during the second capture, and then N3 is the number of organisms captured twice. So captured and marked in N1, counted in N2, and they had that mark. So you can tell that they had been captured twice. All right, so our goal is to accomplish this um, study called the Lincoln Index at a place called Seal Rock in Newport. This is a picture of Seal Rock. Um, what you see here is what is known as Seal Rock. Here is the trail from the parking lot down to the beach, and this is the beach where we will be doing our study. Um, the beach is quite large. Um, let me get a picture showing more of the whole beach. So here you see more of a view of the whole beach. Um, Seal Rock is actually going to be over here, and then um, the beach expands. We're going to be doing our study all the way from Seal Rock over to these rocks that that kind of bookend this beach. Um, as the tide goes out, all of these rocks out here become tide pools that we're able to explore, and that's where we're going to be finding our mobile organism. And specifically, we're going to be considering the turbine snail. So here's a little bit closer view of what the tide pools look like. Um, they're generally pretty shallow. Um, you know, you're going to want to have definitely chacos on or um, rain boots or something, um, but they're generally fairly shallow. Um, you're able to see to the bottom of them, and we will go out to a safe distance. We'll stay away from any crashing waves and things like that. Um, but you're going to be searching through all of these tide pools. And the issue that we have is that this is a massive beach. It's approximately a quarter of a mile long. Like I said, it honestly could be longer. This is just from my memory. I wasn't able to find any coordinates um, for this specifically, but it's quite large and also we're going to be having about 60 people out on this beach all at the same time. And so the challenge for you is to come up with a method, a procedure of how we're going to accomplish this in a systematic way, both the first capture and marking and the recapture. Um, so I'll put up a page with kind of a summary of what I need from you. So tomorrow you're going to be working in, or not tomorrow, on Monday the 7th, you're going to be working in small groups that have already been assigned, and you're going to be trying to accomplish a couple of things. The first thing is um, to come up with a plan, okay? This plan ne needs to be typed. You're going to turn in one typed plan for your group, and it should be detailed and concise, Okay, so concise means not super wordy, super efficient language, um, easy to understand, and a very clear plan. The second thing you need to do is come up with a data table. The data table needs to have a space for students to not only take down their individual data, so the N1, N2, and N3 individually, but also a space to get the group data because remember our calculation is going to be dependent on the data collected by all. Um, some things to keep in mind, um, this has can only be a maximum of one page. And the reason for this is our lab books that we take to Oregon are printed on right in the rain paper, and this paper is really expensive. And so I do need to limit your plan and your data table to one page. Um, so be sure that you keep that in mind. And then lastly, um, we do have some additional materials that you may want to utilize. We have, of course, whiteout that we'll be marking the organisms with. Um, we also have long tape measures. I think they're like... 
up to 100 feet or something like that. And then additionally, we have flagging. So if that would help you in any way, that's fine. You don't have to use those things. But be creative. Um, we will choose the best plan, whatever plan um, makes the most sense and seems like it'll be um, the best to carry out this procedure without making mistakes. That's the plan that we're going to go with. Um, and I'm really excited to do this lab with you guys, and I hope that you really put some thought into how to make this happen. So here's one last view of our beach that we're going to be headed to. The tide in this image is coming in. We will hopefully be out of there by the time um, the water gets this high. But please um, take a look at my website on um, Monday's date. So go to April 7th date, and there you will find... Um, some information. Number one, you're going to find my instructions for actually completing the lab. So capturing, marking, animal experimentation, etc. And then you'll also find um, just some information about Seal Rock itself. So about safety in the area and then some general information about the tide pools. So any of that that you feel could be useful, um, you may reference. Um, please work together as group respect everyone's ideas and have a finished product for me one printed page be sure it's saved digitally somewhere so that I can add it to the um, lab book if it's chosen um, so have that for me by April 8th have a great day mm -hmm.